thanks for coming, Cash. Yeah, it's nice to, to see you again. I haven't seen you for a hell of a long time. Lovely to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you been? Well, good and bad in health. But now I'm back. You're back. <laughs> and seeing the beautiful ladies and being nice to people, being cool to people. Just being my regular self. Having a laugh, going here, going there. Showing respect to people. And not showing respect to people who don't respect me. Such as a lot of assholes. They think they're big. They think they're bad. But they're full of shit. In Cardiff, in Wales, you've got some hard... Oh, my voice. Some hard mothers. You, they are. And they're good people. People you could talk to. They're hard. They don't stab you in the back. Like grass, you know, and bits and pieces. And like they do in other towns. In every city, Manchester, London, Birmingham, we're all the same. I put on, I ain't better than nobody, and nobody is better than me, because I'm me, as simple as that. And um, I had a good life. I've had a bit of a bad life. Tiger P, where I lived, <laughs> I love to say I'm brought up. Going to school down there. I was always in trouble in school because I didn't like the bullies. I used to like fighting the bullies because I know really they never had proper ball. Show off this and show off that. And I used to live my own life. We had a little gang. I'll go back to when I was 10. I could go back till I was six or seven. Yeah. I'll go back till 10. <laughs> when I was 10, me and the guys, we go to, um, they call it Saturday morning pictures for teenagers. We used to get in because we looked 13. I used to go in there, see all the girls from all different places, have a little feel, have a little kiss. Then they dance up on the stage. It was, it was great. From there, we're going home. We go through the market, and they're leaving apples and potatoes and bananas out. We say, oh, yeah. We'll have a couple of them and eat them on the way home. If we see any old women just going down the bay, the wee knows, we'd carry their bags for them. If you never, <laughs> if you never, you get a slap off your parents. It was close down there. We'd go over canal fishing, over the dock fishing, we were supposed to go over the dock. We used to go in there swimming. Police used to call us. Come here, come here, you black bastards, come here. Then we also showed abuse at them. But they couldn't catch us. From there, we used to go diving off the ships and swimming in there. Then go over the bogs, which is over the canal, which is like a quarter of a mile away from my house where my mother lived. Yeah. I used to take the greyhounds over there. My grandfather had greyhounds. He had six. He bought them over in Ireland. And I went missing. <laughs> I went missing. I love it. I, I love this. I went missing. Where's Cassie? Where's Cassie? Cassie, Cassie. Where's Cassie to? Went to the police. They looked everywhere. By the dog. By the kennels. When my step-grandfather, kennels was like this from there to here. With all like shelves in it, so the dogs jump up. I was <coughs> I was tucked into them like that, sleeping. I had a bollocking for that. But rather, they, they were more relieved to see me than anything else, which was okay. I never got no punishment or nothing. They started a boxing club called the Maple Leaf. I'm getting soft on you now, because I loved it. Um, Dennis Police, see, I started. Dennis Police was the one. He taught me with the box. Love to give me a break, I said. All right, Cass. Oh. You all right? Yeah, yeah. It's just a minute. Yeah, yeah. What tissue? No, I got in here now. <laughs> it's just memories. He had the great ones he did. So 
We've got Parthons, which is on the way to Pontypridd. Yeah, Tasville, Pontypridd. And we just let the Crayons run. We used to have the prize money. If the dog won, we'd have 15, 15 shillings. Buy 15 shillings in a day, you're rich, you're rich. But we, we earned it because we took the dogs up out twice a day and running. Anyway, Dennis Police and his father, bless his soul, they had they opened up a gym called the Maple Leaf. And that's where it, that's where it, that was tassel. Oh, that's where it all started. That's where your boxing career started, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How old were you then, Cass? I was 11, 12. And I, even the day I looked, just thinking, about, just thinking about it. Bringing back those memories. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> memories, are good. memories are good to feel. We had some good ones, about some bad, bad ones. <sighs> about people attacking me. In, in fours and fives. And guess what? All of them. No doubt, no doubt yeah. about it. Yeah, well, you, you are doing it. My brother went away when he was 17 up north. He become, he become famous, Colin. I have brother. Colin Dickerson. He got a, a big stall of him and all the rugby players down on the docks. They put there a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And I haven't been to see it. And I should have. Was that your brother, Cass? Yeah. Was it? One of them in the statue. Oh, yeah, that's right. He played for Great Britain. He toured the world. Oh, I'm getting better now. It's coming out to me now, see. Just relax, it's, yeah, fine. it's coming up now. Yeah, it's fine. He went, <coughs> yeah, he went up to Yorkshire. Halifax he played for. He played for Salford. He's had a term. He played for Great Britain as well. They went all over the world. Uh, I only ever seen him twice a year. Uh, I couldn't say we got on. Because I never used to see him much, but what I seen of him was good. There was no badness. I got a lot of people down the docks. Like I said, you get it in any tone. But as a dock saying, you got the old place there, all the sailors go drinking and blocking up, getting stoned and fighting and all that business. But the boxing was the good one. <laughs> we used to fight each other in there. But one of the used to bully me, tried to bully me, until I get my left hook in his ribs. He went, oh, oh. I said, what's the matter, what's the matter? He went, I got cramp. And the said, you ain't got fucking cramp, you just had a lash in the belly. And everybody <laughs> started laughing and joking. And when we finished training then, we had fights all over, mostly up the valleys. Yeah. Boxing all over, Ton of Revel, Murtha, Abergavenny. Pontypreed is fighting them, boxing them. I used to enjoy it. It really turned me on, it did. It really did. And then he come in a couple of weeks after that. Before that, anyway. He said, boys, I got, I said, boys, I got good news here. He said, what's happening? You're boxing for Wales, you're boxing for Wales, you're boxing for Wales, you're boxing. Ah, but the, 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 the gym was fighting for Wales, McNeil. <laughs> A great boxer, good fighter, little Mac. I like little Mac. He had bottles, he'd be like a lion. When he's small, but by he throws some fucking punches. <laughs> you think it's Christmas? Yeah. Like uh, he's a he's a good man. He, God bless his soul. So how many Welsh cat uh, vests did you win? I heard you won one every year, didn't you? I, every year, a couple every year. Yeah. Every time you represented Wales, you'd have one. So every bugger up the gym <laughs> that ever box for Wales had one. Because you used to give your best to them. them all the time, yeah, because I had loads. Amazing. Well, I looked after them, the, the youngsters, just spar with them, trying to teach them how to box. Uh, my family, my cousin, he's... And I tell you, I can't like forget his name. And that's my cousin. Featherweight champion of the world. And I taught him how to box. Me and Ronnie Rush. Steve Robinson. Trained him, Steve. Yeah, yeah. We trained him. I was going to make a comeback. So Steve was only a boy. And I was going to ring, mess about with him. Roddy used to go in there. 
Then I went to sea. Then I went here. Yeah, I went all over the bloody place and all over the world, near enough. Not all over, but I'd say all over anyway. Yeah. And um, he was coming up and coming up. I thought, good, good, good. I found him arrogant. Who, Steve Robinson? Yeah. Yeah? Everybody loves him. I love him too, because he hadn't done nothing to me. But it's the way he performed. I mean, but what's happening, bro? You all right? When they shake his hand, he, he looked at me with a bit of shit. <laughs> So I thought, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. You want to be like that? You be like that. <coughs> when I reached 13, 14, I used to love to babysit. I used to love it because we had somewhere to take our girlfriends. Anybody want to babysit? It's all the boys in the dog room. Why? And they give you a few bob as well. So you've got a nice place. You've got something to eat. You'd have a laugh and a joke. And you've got your girlfriend there. One more do you want. <laughs> and they don't, when they finish the pub, they go down to Casablanca or down one of the clubs down the bay. Yeah. The North Star with all the, the, the Polish, Swedish people. Yeah, it was the Polish, you know, the Swedes, I think. Beautiful people he was. And I, oh yeah, we loved it. And I said to myself, why don't you be really, really serious and do this and do that? I was serious in my own way because I used to help people. Nobody ever helped me. Nobody ever gave me fuck all. Oh, look, sorry for swearing, but it just come out. Nobody ever gave me nothing. Nothing. All right, you might see my, my uncle might give me a tuppence or tuppence in them days and pennies and all that. But my mother was the only one that looked after me. Where was your mum from originally, Cass? Well, she was born in Gathlygare. Gathlygare is by Bagoid. <laughs> That's a wild place. Yeah. That's a wild place. And um, what happened was my grandmother was with my great grandfather, was with my great great grandfather. She was from Bristol. My nana and my mother's father, we always thought he's from um, Barbados and St. Kitts. We always thought that, but he wasn't. He was born in America. That my family over there are billionaires. Yeah. And he won't give us a penny. I've never asked for nothing. My mother never. None of us asked for nothing. Only one person. Oh, family, this family, that. We should have some. My mother said, well, get a friggin' job. You don't have to go begging for other people's. Where does the name um, Casanova come from? Oh, oh it's a lovely name. That That's a lovely me, name. That gets me into trouble too. <laughs> it gets me into trouble. Oh, your name's Cat yeah, you're a liar. I said, and I'd look at her, I thought, well, she's clean. She looks nice and sweet. I said, I tell you what, love, let me take you home and I'll show you who's Casanova. Not jump on, bang, bang, ding, ding. I like to kiss, cuddle, and touch it. Touch, I said, I'll touch you places. No man have ever touched you. And I made her laugh and have a joke. And she was nice in bed too, anyway. She was all right. I was going to say something else before that then. Oh, it was a rave down there. You gamble out the back. Dark lights like you see in America. They're smoking a ganja, drinking. All the hoes coming in and out and all that. But the hoes were some of the best women down there. And do you want me to tell you something? Eight out of ten prostitutes, and I loved them because I, I knew when I was kids, some of them. I was doing it for years coming back. It was from London, Manchester, Birmingham, and it was down there, going up and down beach streets and this. And the local people was getting the blame, getting the blame, if you know what I mean. Like, oh yeah, your sister's out on beat. Da, da, da. It was only like two out of ten. It was on a game that was from down, from down the docks. Yeah, um, I was going to say, when well, I was 14, I was going to say something. Went up the valleys. Oh, you, my mother, yeah. They, my mother's, on my, on my nana's side, on my nana's side, they were rich too. They had, um, there was a deal, import, export, and everything, ships. Yeah. You know, food and grain or whatever it is, you know. And I said, if you don't leave this nigger alone, that's your ass. You boom, get out. 
They went to him, my nana was telling me, he was, he said, they went, they went to your grandfather and said, if you don't get up to you, you're dead, we're gonna hang you. Of course, he took off. A couple of days later, it was like a film. She slid, slid down a bloody drain pipe. <laughs> I said, a drain pipe, I said, them, they'll come off. Anyway, she went down there and I moved to Wales. They had my mother, my uncle Joe, uh, yeah. Yeah, my mother, my uncle Joe, my auntie May, she had three kids. Uh, they come to Wales, and that's where my mother was born, in Cardiff. But before that, when I moved to Cardiff, like I said, from Bristol, I went to um, the Valleys, Gasly Gare. From there, I think she was about seven or eight, I think she was, when all the family, your family come to Cardiff. Yeah. Uh, and that's how, that's how the family started. But like you just said, how did you get the name Casanova? Yeah. Obviously, my father was named Casanova. Yeah. Obviously. Um, what my mother told me, and my nana have told me is, because my father died when I was like six or seven, something like that, six or seven. He come all over the country, he, come, he was a seaman. He come back and forth, met my mother, Oh, I'm jumping the gun again. I does that. I jump forward instead of straight. Um, we said my nana's side. What they said, you know, blah, blah, blah. that's when they come to Cardiff, uh, Wales. They come to Cardiff. And um, what else was it? No, he used to. My grandfather used to go on the mountains every Friday when they'd have their wages, and they used to fight for money. Never lost a fight, my nana said. Wow. Never, never lost a fight. She said, that's how we survived in them days. But there's money from there, I'm fighting. My mother's father was from, like I said, so, well, I've always thought he was born in the islands, but he was, he was born in America. And they're very rich and wealthy out there now. They've got their own church, their own supermarkets, this, that. If I put my foot down, and done things, I could get a few bob out of it, but I won't. I wouldn't do that. If they come to me and say, oh, you're the few bob, I oh, think that's nice, you know? Yeah. Um, he was a big boy. Nobody used to mess with him down the docks. I would say he was the hardest one down there. Besides, they talk about the acties. I like the acties, they're great people, I can't fault them, but they lives on their reputation. There's only one that's a, that wants to fight all the time, all the time. And he's like John Case. He wants to beat up somebody that uh, he knows he can do. And that's how he got his reputation. But that's bollocks. I got my reputation for fighting man to man. Especially the gypsy. That was a hard fight, that gypsy. Just to fight the gypsies? Oh, I had two fights then. I ain't fighting them no more. Oh. Then it's police used to go over there. They only to teach me how to box and not as for other. And they used to bet. They used to play pitch and toss. That came with the money. And they'd say, oh, my boy, could you beat your boy? Da, 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 da. And the tennis had argued, and tennis had fight then. And I thought, yeah, all right. And this other guy was messing about, like pushing you and pushing tennis. I went, mean, I can't have that. I can't have that. That's tennis, you know. <laughs> He's my buddy. He told me how to show me all the boxing and his father and his brother. So I got stuck in then. Oh, there was a murder there was. A couple of months after that, I bumped into town, left town, went over splot. There was awesome cats outside. I went in to get some lemonade and crisps and fucking clear little kid with me. And this guy was in, hey, you nigga, you was the one. Da, 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 da. So he was giving me blows, he was. And I said, I can't take this. I just opened up then. I just went crazy. I must have thrown a million, billion, trillion punches. And then he went down. Then he yeah. got back up. I went down, then I got back. It was like a seesaw, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> I seen him a couple of weeks later. Oh, we went in the pub and had a drink. And we was only fucking 14, 15, I think. Something like that, that age. You could do that in them days. Can't do it now. Well, some people do do it now. Um, I had a good childhood. I think I had a good childhood. When I was 14 as well, we got the pocket money. We go over the allotments, get carrots, potatoes, and all that business, and yeah. sell them. 
Wenn wir sind eine gute Mutter, wir gehen fischen, da noch sind spät am Swansea. Wir haben ein Boot, wir haben ein Rowing Boot, wir nearly sunk. I didn't know they used to catch fish like that. They get hook with feathers, and I used to fish with bass. Yeah. As it touches it, count three, one, two, three, boom, pull it out. You got six of them bloody fish that big. Mackerel. Mackerel, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come back and give them to the old ladies, you know, the old pensioners. When we was working on the docks, and we was getting the butter ships used to come in. Yeah. The old ladies and things like that, you know. We always help the elder, always. If I never, my mother would have given me a slap. <laughs> that was the days when, like, community was proper community. It was a proper community then. It was yeah. proper. Yeah. But they said they had a bad name as well over the girls. Like I said, eight out of the ten was from all over the place. Used to come regular down and doing their business, what they'd done. There's the Maltese, the Italians. They were mostly the ponces and pimps down there. Yeah. Not our regulars. We had one or two little silly buggers down there, like, but they didn't give to be a bad, bad name. Well, I suppose every man got to live which way, whatever. But that's a part of life, whatever you do. Yeah. As long as you're happy in what you're doing. I won't let nobody bully me. And that's what they fear. You know, people got their own opinions on different things. Yeah. You do what you want to do. I ain't going to stop you. I'll say to you, oh, don't do this, don't do that. You said, oh, fuck, I'll go. I'll say, yeah, right. If you don't listen, you'll feel. That's what my mother used to say to me. If you don't listen to me, you'll feel. I said, yeah, right, ma'am. But I ran a while when I was 14 then. I was going. I was going to London buying more hair suits from a shop called Morrison's in Cardiff. Then we went to London to buy it because we used to go to stealing and messing about. I cannot. Well, of course, I steal. You tell me where man. They've never told you a lie in his life. He's a liar. Tell me what man never teased something. Even if it's something like a lighter or a cigarette, they stole something. And when I tell the judges that and all that, I tell the police that I, I, I pay for you your wages. You're supposed to be protecting, protecting me, not come here, nigga, get back to fucking Cardiff and all that shit. I said, well, come outside and say that. <clears throat> you jump in the car and they go. I said, oh, yeah, smart bastards. I still get a bit of pressure off them. Um, I wouldn't say bad, bad, bad. But I had a friend that was in the police force. And I met her in a party. He fucked. I give her a good rub, rub it over. You know, she was lovely, good in bed. We had a laugh and she used to tell me little things. Oh, so-and-so, so-and-so, he's eating grass and he's paying this to the police and he's doing... I said, you don't have to tell me that, look. I know it's half of it, like, you know. She said, watch your back, Cass. Never mind you got friends here and friends there. Watch your back, because they're jealous of you. I went, jealous of me? Don't be jealous of me for. I ain't got fuck all. The only thing I got is love in my heart, party and enjoy myself. And I, said, I think I was 17 then. I got to jump in a year or two like that. And I goes back again and back and forth. I said, then, that's, the, that's, the, that's, that's, that's the way it is. Life is life. You, you do what you want to do. Don't be forced to do anything. And then I got into trouble like when I see when I'm 17. I done like 18 months at sea. Come back home, got in trouble with the police. My mother phoned Michael, send him up to me, Evelyn, send him up to me, send him up to me. Well, I was going up there. I thought it was, to be truthful, I was helping people. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then they said, thing, the Black House, Ivory, Islington, sorry, Islington, Islington. So this is where, so this is where... where Michael Abdul Malik was. They said he was the Black Power leader. Michael X? Michael X, yeah, that's what so they call him. The Freitas is... Michael the Freitas? Him. Yeah. So he was the Black Power leader in the UK, wasn't he? Yeah. So what was he to you then, Cash, just so people are clear? He's my mother's boyfriend, you know? Yeah. He was, he was Evelyn's boyfriend, he was, Michael. He was like a father to me, he was. So did you meet him? So did he come into your life after you'd been to the Navy and all that then, was it? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, before then. Before the Navy? Yeah, before then. Before then. He came up to London doing this and doing that. But I always thought... And truthfully, I won't lie, I, you could put me on a machine now and I'll tell you the, the same thing. I'll tell you the truth. I thought 
It was going to have a community up there. Helping black people, but the old people and poor people. Why I really been up there for, I was on the run from the police. So I had to get out of Cardiff. Yeah. So that's where I went. SBS Salvage, South Wales number one vehicle dismantler and car part specialist. Serving customers throughout the region for the past 10 years. You are sure to receive the very best price for your scrap or salvage vehicles. Just check out our websites, Scrap Car Cardiff or even sbssalvage.com to get an instant online quote. We buy all cars, vans, etc. Should you need any part for your car or van, then don't hesitate to call us and our dedicated parts department will definitely be on hand to assist you. We also offer the very best prices for copper, brass, lead, aluminium and all other types of metals. Just give our friendly staff a call on 01446 421 034. Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, or Saturday, 9 to 1, to receive a price or come down to our depot in the rear of the unit, 7 Redrup Business Park, Cardiff Road, Barry, CF63 2QW. We also don't just buy cars and sell parts. We also sell part-worn tyres at the very best prices at our depot on Robins Lane in Barry, CF63 1QT. Call us Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, on 01446 701 515, where we will assist you in any way we possibly can. And then you hear all kind of strange things, and I was meeting all some top artists, but I had a fight in April, and this fellow from the West Indies put his hand up my sister, my stepsister's uh, skirt. Bigger than me, stronger than me, but I battered him. I battered him. I feared him, really, because so big, he looked so strong. But I got a bigger heart. That's the why he won that fight. I, I chucked him out, like, get out, don't ever come back here again. Uh, 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 you're not black enough to be in black power. I said, I mean, you're black power. I mean, you're to help people like you. They've got nothing to do, no homers, no this and that. And then what I found out, I found my mum, yeah. What I found out what, what Michael was up to and what, what he was doing, I didn't like it, but I wanted to help him. So I done all his security. Anywhere he went, he got to tell me I was before. Yeah. I'd like, get a car, we'd go in a car, jump out of that car, go around the corner, jump in another car, and we're down in Kent in a big fucking mansion, millionaire's mansion. Then we go down Kingston, down there, and we go all over. Uh, the best one was with Nick Jagger. He was with a, a lady called Marianne Faithful, a father to a member of the parliament. Well, she was a lovely lady. She really was. And Mick was, we have a joke and a laugh, and we had a couple of splits up there. And Michael said, um, there might be a bit of trouble. Let's get mint, mint different to the boys, two cars, one each end, <laughs> and stay there for that night and see what happens, see if anybody comes. Because they were in a room and had a chat as well. You know? Michael and Mick Jagger, yeah? Yeah, they were so in So why was Mick Jagger around Michael X at that point there? Why was he... Well, Mike, was well, he just a supporter? Was he a Michael? He was a bit. I don't know, I don't know if he had money off him, but I know he supported Michael in all the ways, like. Yeah. And there's a lot of rich people, a lot, a lot of rich people that used to give Michael a few bob to do this and do that. But they couldn't get away from the fact that I'm from the docks, I ain't daft. I don't know if the government is going to come now and chuck me in jail. But Michael had people in the government and they was going to smuggle tons and tons of cocaine into Britain. He had two fellas he did. I think one, one somebody grasped one of them out and he got shot and killed in the government. They shot him. He ended up in the Thames. And um, that was it. Yeah, them, yeah, yeah, true. One, one ended up in the a, in a, in a Thames. Which was, well, in London, 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 it's like, it's like America, isn't it, London? Yeah. If you need anything, it's always there. If you want anything, it's there. Um, Did he have anybody else minding him, or was it just you? Two of us, it was me and Mintiv. Yeah. I met the Richardsons as well. They had a, they were, <laughs> they were lovely, lovely people. Yeah. I think it was a, Two brothers, is there two brothers, Richard, the Richardson's brothers? I hear about them being gangsters and this and that. And I had a chat with them, we had a laugh and this and that. 
And one of, one of them, I don't, I don't know which one it was. He said, oh, I like you. He said, you got balls. I said, why is that? He said, nobody walks in the way you walked in. I said, what do you mean? Well, you think I come in a wheelchair and joking and laughing. And he said, you ought to come over here more often. He said, I like you. He said, you got a bit of balls. And I was telling Michael and a few people, they said, Cassie, they're gangsters. They'll stab you tomorrow. But they don't do it. They pay people to do it. Yeah. You know, they go there and front this and front that. And people think they did it, but they never. They always had that all alibis, like. But... They was nice, p- nice people. Like Mick Jagger, I like Mick. He, he was, he, he was good. Yeah. And there's loads of artists that I can't even remember. They used to give Michael a few bob. One, um, John Lennon involved with him. As well, John Lennon's X. involved. What was he like as a man, John Lennon? I, as a person, as a human being, I didn't like him at all. Up the black house in, in what they call the black house. How could it be the black house when there's bloody white people up there? Women, kids, and children. Yeah. If they said half cast or this or that, but it wasn't a black house. It's yeah. a name the press and the government give them. Yeah. That's what that was. That's what it was. So that was meant to be like Michael X's, like big is uh, where he did all his business from. One of that was his place. Yeah, that's right. The black house. I used yeah, to live yeah. up there. Yeah. Sometimes I used to go down there in the street. They had a house down there. I used to stay down there. It all depends on what part of London I was. I used to sneak out and go down Soho, a place called Ronnie Scott's. He was a jazz player. And there was these millionaires outside. They couldn't get in. So the people who went down, there was three of us. Me, Mintiff, and a guy called Nigel. Nigel Samuels, he's a billionaire. You know Nigel Samuels, the watchers in the shops and all that? The, the, The grandson. He was helping them up there as well. They stopped his allowance because he was giving Michael a few bob. And then he just disappeared. Yeah. His family must have took him somewhere or put him in the nutter's house or whatever. And he was a nice fella, Nigel. Nigel Samuels. He was a very, very nice fella. Who was the other guy, Cass Muntiff? What was he? Muntiff. Muntiff. He's from the West Indies. I, I met him in Cardiff. He said, uh, you know, when I was home for the weekend. Yeah. I said, who are you? Said, oh, I'm in the... We had a chat. He said, oh, I'm going to go to London to see Michael. I said, Michael who? Michael Abdul Malik. Oh, I said, I know him. Good no, one. See what he got to say. Yeah. Oh, I know him. He's not a bad fella, is he? He's, he's pretty good. He, he said, I don't know him. I said, I'll oh, hang on to London. I said, I gave him the address in his London. I said, come to the Black House. But I don't like that name, the Black House. Because it sounds bad. It sounds like black people is getting as white people. Yeah. You know, you had white people there, white women there, kid, uh, white kids there, uh, all different colour people, my colour, darker than me, and, you know, it was... The house is... I'm glad you said that. Well, the black house, what they call the black house. Downstairs, all upstairs was like little flat beds. Downstairs was like a supermarket downstairs, but they're going to change it into a... Uh, with all ornaments for, of black people, uh, films for black, for black people, table tennis and snooker, all that type of kick. Well, I like that, table tennis, snooker, a little spliff, a little line, a little this, a little that. And it was quite nice. Um, I enjoyed myself. But Michael said a few things I didn't like. It wasn't a big argument, but it was an argument that I didn't like. Especially, especially when he said the, the docks was a dump. It was never a dump. It was like any other town or any other dock sites, like Manchester, like I said earlier on. Manchester, Birmingham. There's things, people says things. But Michael, that's why you like me, because I tell him things, like, you know. They went to do an armed robbery. Michael never. But two or three guys from down, what's that place they all used to live? By something park. There was people from the other side of London anyway. They, they, they used to do all the badness and all shit. I said, you know, I said, I can't stay here this long, man. I said, I'm going to give myself up to the police. I said, because I'll kill some motherfucker. You know, they would call me all the names they like, black bastard. And they go, yeah, 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 mm, I fucked your mother. I fucked your sister. That's what I tell them. I said, you want me to make you mad? I'll make you mad. You know, yeah. I, when I stood, when they, they just, uh, I could, oh, you're almost, you're almost. 
I've never, ever run away from a fight. I've walked away from two because I know if I batter them, they're going to phone the police. It's as simple as that. So what I just done, I just gave him a few slaps. I didn't beat him up, you know. They couldn't go to the police. Oh, look at the back, I got you. I've never seen so many grasses in Barry in all my life. And I've been around the world. Yeah. Honest to God, I'm serious. What happened then when you come back from London to Cardiff? Did you get nicked or was you all right? Or? Yeah, no, I got nicked, they locked me up. Did you end up in jail? Yeah, yeah, I didn't mind. It was only for a couple of months. And I had a letter. Saeed Akbar Abdul Malik, that's my Muslim name up there. Because you got Muslim names in the Black House. After Michael, because, you know, Saeed Akbar Abdul Malik. Um, it's the... I had a letter, airmail it was. It was from the uh, school, said, oh, yeah, I didn't know you. Black Power cast, I said, Black Power? It hit me there, Michael. Anyway, they had him in jail. Yeah. In uh, in Trinidad. Port of Spain, was yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. He was down there. Yeah. And there was a girl there, her father was a member of parliament. Gil, and I think Gil something her name is. I'm not quite sure her name. She's the one who got, they said, Michael killed. Yeah. On his property that he rented or he bought or whatever. So she was um, the daughter of somebody of the member of parliament, wasn't she? Oh, but yes. she was... Uh, Involved while well, she was her partner was Malcolm X's cousin, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Mel or Gamel, I think he was. He went back to um, yeah, America and they killed him. Yeah, they killed him straight away. They killed uh, John Lennon sent peeps, solicitors, and barristers over to uh, to Trinidad. The government wouldn't let him in, said, You man, you can't come in here. Uh, they tried to stitch Michael up like they stitched me up. They found a couple of ounces of ganja when I was like 17, 18 or something. Yeah, it was just a couple of ounces they, they teethed. But the police, another time, the police set me up, tried to, try to, and I had witnesses there too. I said, they said, Cassie, look at that. There I went, what? I went, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he picked it back up and he rushed off and jumped, went outside and the police stopped because it's out the back where my pigeon cup was, next to the boxing gym. Yeah. And uh, they, the police wouldn't let me there until they, they all finished and gone. And then all of a sudden, one police come back and said, oh, look what we found. I said, wow, I said, that looks like good stuff. Give me a smoke of it. Ah, you, you are ah, you. And he lashed me in my back of my head. And you know when he says, you seen stars? I never used to believe that. Yeah. I fucking seen stars, <laughs> I'm telling you. You bang, my head shook like that. She said, I thought, fuck me. You should go and box or something, you know? And I cursed them, I called them all the motherfuckers. I'm gonna fuck their granny, I'm gonna dig out to their grave and fuck their granny and mother and all that. I just went wild. After that, <laughs> they got a girl from Caffilly to come down and have a chat with me and play with my cock and do this and do that. And they nicked me for um, a bag of chips and a pie. I said, we're nicking you for the living off immoral earnings. I went, well, oh. he said, you're a pimp. I went, no, no, you're the fucking pimp, mate. You, yeah. One of your mates just got locked up a steel and our hustlers. I said, these are going to the street, the police. Hey, hello, come here, blah, 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 Nick, you come on, play my cock, have a fuck. The police used to get away with murder down the docks. Yeah. They used to, uh, all right, I had a few slaps off them. But I don't know, they, I think they liked it. I think they, they got a kick out of it because there's a guy now I went to school with him and his brother. His name is Peter Pine and David Pine. Well, Peter, I met a couple of months ago because I was down, down a biggie. And he said, oh, Cassie, I got news for you. I said, what's that, Pete? <laughs> they said, you're the hardest man down the docks. I went, what? I said, who told you that? I said, Peter, don't start coming causing trouble and people fight me. No, I said, because... With my bad stomach now and this and that, where I ruptured the other of my operation, if I goes nuts, I'm going to bring something with me. I'm going to bring a tool with me. Yeah. And you're, 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 he's going to have it, because you're not having all that, because I can see people trying to set me up. I said, well, who told you this shit anyway? He said in the name of the copper, he said, I know him, he's working on a dock, he's retired. He said, uh, you got more bottle than him down there. 
and, and they just liked you cast the way you was. I said, is that right? But why should he say that I'm the eldest man down a bee? Because I don't think, I think I could say you're tasty, but I wouldn't say you're easy had and easy had just because I heard about him. I got to see with my own eyes to see if he's had and how he, how he has a fight. Because sometimes you enjoy a fight if you're winning. Sometimes you lose, but you still enjoy it. My mother used to say, I must be kinky. I must like pain. <laughs> I said, no, ma'am. And then uh, my nana told me about <laughs> they had riots, black and white. Well, the Chinese man was with a woman down the docks. And uh, he went to town with her. There was trouble. And there was murder. People getting stabbed. And I said, no, no. I said, you're telling me lies. It wasn't lies. Because I used to say to the old fellow as well, was that right? They said, yeah, Cass. I said, riots. A, a, a race riots. They said, yeah. I said, wow. And uh, as, you get, as you get older, you see more things and you hear more things. Not just happening to me. It was happening to a hell of a lot of people. Yeah. A hell of a lot of people. Now, this thing just in Cardiff. No. Is it London, Manchester, Birmingham, Scotland, Ireland, Liverpool? It's in every country. Every, not every country. I mean, every city and every town. I don't fear no man on this earth. Because I could do to them what they could do to me. But I'll do worse. <laughs> I was if somebody give you a slap cast, give them 10 times back. And that's what I used to do. I always used to listen, listen to my mother. And I said, Dennis Fleece, the boxer. Oh, I love Dennis. He's great. He's still alive. Thank God. His father, when he was boxing, Cassie, and a few of us used to tell, not just me, first time, jab quick, jab. If that's in your bloody face, he can't see you. So therefore, jab him, have a right cross, then give him a left hook. And that's why I love the boxing. Yeah. Yeah. You go back to London now. My stepsister come crying in the house when I was having a meal down in Bering Street. And um, what's the matter? The man said, he got, she got sweets and he wants to take me for a ride in a car down to the zoo. Well, how fast did I move out of that fucking house? And, I, and I'm running up the street, leaves all the road. There's a funny corner, London. It's the car. I went, is that him? Yeah, that's him. He, he was gone, boy. If I ever would have caught him, he'd have been in trouble. Yeah. I would have been in trouble for battering him or whatever. I like love and peace, me, and having, the par having a good time and having a party. Yeah. Anybody could be bad. Anybody could pick up a gun, a knife, a sword. I'd rather pick up women. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Let's talk about... Um... <coughs> Some of the people you will rub, rub shoulders with a bear, like so, like <coughs> obviously knowing about Michael and on all that. So, like people like Peter Rackman, what was he like? Well, Rackman, Rackman come over this country when he was a kid. I think he was 16, 17. I think they said he come over here with about 75p from Poland. He ended up a millionaire or even a billionaire. He had the horses everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And he's a charge black people. No white people is in, in his houses. It's all people from the Caribbean. Yeah. All Caribbeans are Africa, like Egypt. Egypt is Africa. Yeah. And you wouldn't think it's Arab Africa, but it's Africa, you know? Yeah. And um, he had a few women on the game for him. He had a lot of women. He would miss her run over with a girl called Christine Keeler. She was a model. He was on telly about, about that, Christine Keeler. Because the fellow she was knocking off, Rackman and this other fella, had something to do with the government. And I think it was him that was getting the coke as well, wanted to get coke, tons of it, from over here and over to, to, to Britain, like. <laughs> yeah, Rackman. Um, my, I did, another thing I didn't like about Michael was, he had the Alsatian dog, and he started working for Rackman because he lived in one of Rackman's rooms. He never had flats or that. Everybody had a room. You know, you got like a bed sitter sort of thing, you know? Yeah. And that was, that was a rat fucking ridden that place. A Rackman had it, and Rackman wanted him to work for him. So he, he had a few months with Rackman and left him. He used to set the dogs on black people, Michael. When he done that, nah. That, that took the pudding out of my belly. Was that the way you pie company? Kind of thing, or was it? Uh, no, uh, well, yes and no. Because in the end, 
I got so fed up, I said, fuck you all. If you're black, white, pink, or blue, I don't care who you are. I ain't prejudiced. And how could I be prejudiced? My nana's white. My mother's half caste. My grandfather's black. You, 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 how could you be prejudiced? Yeah. But um, London is a bit too fast. Because they do things, and they does it quick too. Like they want to rob somebody, they do it. There's a few robberies up there. I won't mention no names. They come back. I said, where you been? He said, oh, went to do a robbery. I said, well, don't do robbery. Well, for you're not skint. Oh, well, it was big money. I said, oh, yeah. He said, do you want something? He said, no. I said, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Because I know these, these boys, they, they go with guns. They don't mess about. Yeah. They never come back with fuck all. Never come back with nothing. Uh, we was having a laugh about it, and they, they didn't like it either. Ah, if you would have come, you would have done the same. They went in the bloody bookies with shotguns. And <laughs> the ones behind the desk, because they had things covering this, things so you can't jump over them. When he pulled up a gun like that, my mate said, Cassie said, you, you never see so many move so fast. They said, bam, wham through the door. And they supposed to be villains. I, I said, them going to fuck themselves. They're no good. All they wanted to do is think, they're acting bad. Oh, they done this. Oh, they done that. But the majority of the things, the majority of the things they're saying, they never done. They used to make up stories. And I used to think, yeah, yeah, you know, black, black, I was in the evening having a drawer or do a bit of cooking up there. It was a gang place, like, really, because we had a little gang up there. But they were so nasty up there. They were dirty, some of them. Some of the West Indians, they were dirty. Just like some white people were dirty, and some Chinese and some Indians. And uh, I said, you'll have to go make you and him. You and your missus and a kid, I'm sorry. Why is that, Saeed? I said, you could smell the piss and shit from your room all over the building. Now, the black house was like six houses put together. You run across roofs. You yeah. go anywhere. It's like a tunnel in some places. Yeah. And um, I'd done a few naughty things, but I never hurt anybody doing anything. I didn't hurt nobody, like, you know. <laughs> like, I did do a, a robbery in Barry. I went to God Nick. I got grassed on by Charlie Brown. You know it's Charlie Brown and his family. Yeah. We left, we left the, the guns and this and that. He was going to get rid of him, rid of him. Of course, he went home. <laughs> he said, from behind the city. Had an argument with Mrs. Get them Max away. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Then she seen the guns and she freaked in. She said to him, if you don't get me more money, I'm kicking you and your fucking daughter out here. You're causing nothing but fucking trouble. And then when the police come, she phoned the police. The police come said, yeah. Casanova was there, so-and-so, so-and-so was there. Who was the other two? She said, I don't know. Charlie didn't even know, Charlie Brown. He didn't, uh, is it Charlie or Billy? Well, any the Brown, the boxer. He said, uh, Charlie, the boxer. Charlie, wasn't he? the boxer, yeah, Charlie yeah. Brown. Um, he said, you can't chuck me out, is this and that. Well, if you don't, I'm going to tell him, and I'll go and tell Cassie, you're going to grass him out and this and that. Anyway... In the end, he grasped me out. They, I ended up in Long Latin. He ended up down the moor. I was, when I went down to Long Latin for that, I was in the gym training, just keeping fit like I like the gym. I met a Polish fella, a lovely fella. He had a body of a 28, 29 year old man. And he was like 60, 70. Wow. Didn't I go through some pain in that gym? And there was these three London boys. And I said to him, Kowazi or Kowazi, you're fucking in with you. So I stopped. I looked. He did like from over there where he is now. Yeah. And I, I was, I went, who the fuck are you talking about? I said, I'll kick your fucking teeth down your throat. This is long lad and we don't have no niggas in here. I said, anytime you want to see me, come and see me. 
anyway, now we had a, a break on the weekend, and we had everybody just do like training, boxing, or weights and all that. They come in there and they see me punch the bag or move and move or mess about. The Polish fella said, See him? Cassie would have battered the fucking three of you. You're nothing but fucking, what do you call them, cockneys? You're only a cockney prick and you're this and that and things like that, you know? Yeah. And I loved him, the Polish fella. I, I really did. He was showing me on, on the weights and what to do and this and that. And um, I heard a couple of nights later, I'm in my cell, I'm a little spliff. You black bastard casting over, we're going to fucking get you in the morning, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I went, is that right? And I recognised the voice, because I'm good at that. I went, yeah, all right, then I'll see you in the morning. Don't forget, I'll come down and give you a kiss, you prick. The electric doors there, see? Opens you up, electric doors. Gone straight downstairs to the other flight. As he see me come in, the two of them, they tried to run in the guy's house. It, guys, the guy's flat, the one that told him to call nigger and all that type of shit. Yeah. But I battered the one. I, that was his bodyguard. I battered him for the start because I knew he was his bodyguard. The other one running in his cell and banged, <laughs> and banged himself up. Yeah. For that, they sent me to um, Dartmoor. And the ones on our wing, which was good for Lindsay as well, was good for, they put a petition in to bring me back from that motor there because I never started it. They said the screws must have heard it. And there was a a confrontation between the governor and, and, and the cons then. And then I liked, I seen this fella, I didn't like him. I went to work. Who's that nigger over there? I went, oh, not again, for fuck's sake. This little skinny fella, drawn. Ah, oh, you should. Don't worry about him. He's just a nut. He's just a nut. I fed up with him myself. I said, you leave this old man alone, you fucking prick. I said, all you cockneys sometimes try to get away with murder, think you're big and you're all bad. I said, here I am, no, have it up with me. He went, yeah, yeah, you think you're all bad? I said, no, you stink. I'm bad, you stink. Yes, I am bad. But you got to tell him that, because the other ones are trying to take liberties with you. The Irishman come over, no, leave him, leave him, leave him. Leave him alone, leave him alone, leave him alone. I said, all right then, all right then, Pat, leave him. We was on a machine in the laundry. <laughs> Two days later, they shipped him out. He was stabbed before they shipped him out. Was he? Guess who he was? He was the chief of the IRA. And I was working with him in there. Wow. Don't worry with him. When they told me, I went, wow, I must have be been his good books now. Yeah. See that that... God made him, he might, he might look after me if anybody wants to attack me, like, you know. Yeah. And uh, I can't even, even invited me over to Ireland, like, you know, to stay wow. for the weekend. That's what he said. Come over, cats, for the weekend. Yeah. He said, you like horse riding, pigeons? He said, I know all them people with pigeons and horses. Yeah. I said, yeah, all right. And I got on well with the IRA. They, was, they were nice people. And they're fighting for their country, which is a, a part of Ireland and this and that. And... I don't like to hear about Ireland fighting all in them days when the British was shooting them and they were shooting them. I thought, what the hell are they doing that for? All for land, like America's going to do in any country. Like, what the artists aren't telling you now? Russia is over there in uh, the Ukraine. Oh, what did you say, the Ukraine? Yeah, yeah. Where the, where the war is and all that. They want their land back because that part of the land belonged to Russia. So they say, I don't know. It's only what I hear and what people tell me. Yeah. And sometimes they exaggerate too much, and sometimes they tell you too much lies. So you can believe sometimes. You can sit there and go, oh, I didn't believe that. Oh, oh. And it's a waste of time half of the time. Yeah. But, uh... So what are you up to these days, then, Cass? Are you still doing the pigeons and...? Well, I give up the pigeons. I had the pigeons. <laughs> I said to the missus... I want to win the longest distance on the South Road. I'll be famous then. Just joking and laughing, like, because she loved the pigeons. Feed them, clean them out. Yeah. Every day if the weather was good, jump in the car, and she'd take them 20, 25 miles, 20, 25 miles. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, thousands of pigeons are going out to this big, big race. It was called Bonn. I think it's the southeast of Germany. To, from there to my house is... 474 or 464, one of the two. Anything, got, anything over 
300 miles is long distance, 300 miles is middle distance. It's a two day race as well. <laughs> and don't have no pigeons home. Blah, 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 blah. I said, bet I'll have one home. I was, I'm sending two. I said, you know, what I'm going to send is Rainbow Warrior. What do you mean, Rainbow Warrior? What are you the ones all of you hating you because he beat you all the time, he beat you all the time. He even beat his brothers and sisters in racing. I put him in there. I won first club, first show nom, first uh, two bird, and 18th fed out of three to 4,000 pigeons. I was the only one in the club, even up to now. Yeah. Oops, sorry. That's even right. up to now, they yeah. haven't broke the record. Wow. They haven't broke my record. Rainbow Warrior. I, yeah. Rainbow Warrior, I called him. He, he, he died. He didn't die. He went to a race to Scotland, a place called Perth. Or Edinburgh? No, I think it was Perth. Under 500 miles, Perth. Edinburgh is 500 miles. And um, the transporter that picked up the pigeons from the club broke down. Then it got set on fire. So they said they let the pigeons go. But they never. What they'd done was they wanted to get home quick. Instead of staying up there, we're giving them the saying to the police what happened to burn. Yeah. They cut the pigeons' feet off. No they way. took the rings off, put them in a bag in sacks, they took about hundreds of pigeons, and chucked them in a the fucking river. Nobody knows whose pigeons they are because they don't know what the ring numbers. Yeah, yeah. That that hurt me that you know, I wanted to I wanted to cause trouble in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people didn't want to say it, so many things. Because one or two people in there are up in a pigeon world and got money and got this. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. They murdered my fucking pigeons. I went off like this. Oh, they didn't like that either. Mm. You're nothing but a troublemaker. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, yeah. your missus never sat down when she was in bed with me. <laughs> That's the way I get to my own back. Some of their mother or their sister or their aunties. Yeah, yeah. They didn't like it. Um, horses. You remember the horses I had? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the horses I had. We started off with two, just for me and my missus, you know? Yeah. Ride, and I taught her how to ride. Because I used to ride the gypsies' horses when I was fucking 13, 14. Yeah. Over the common. And uh, we ended up having another one, then another one, then another one. I thought, oh, we need to breed them. So we got a stallion. Bought a stallion, and we bred them, sold them. We gave uh, some to charities. We give, the woman got me vexed because we give horse away. She was a beauty as well. The fellow was passing. He asked whose horses these was. And this, he said, oh, my son loves horses. This is an hustle. This is what he's trying to do. He did get away with it too. Oh, yeah, my son, he, he got bad legs and I want him to ride a horse, but we can't afford it. And, and he used to come down once a week with his kid. Oh, I looked at him and oh, poor fucker. Give him a ride on the horses and... We broke in the horse and gave him a little, little filly, like, you know. The fucker went away to fella, like, I've never seen him since. I heard, what I heard was, <laughs> he sold the horse, kept the money. Now that money and the horse is, the kid's not his. Yeah, yeah. You know, we give the horse to the kid, not him, and he went and sold the bloody horse. Fuck, yeah. I didn't like that. It was a pony. It wasn't a horse. Right. It was a pony. What do you think of, like, what do you think of, like, the bay today, Tiger Bay? It's not the bay no more. No? Mm -mm. Call it Somali land, they call it. So I heard Somali Alley. When I was a kid, there was Somalis, three or four, maybe five, maybe six, that lived down there. All the rest were from all over the bloody world. But they moved out all the people that was born and bred and brought up down the bay. Ely, St. Melons, Rummy, Land Rummy. And they moved in all the Somalis. Yeah. They was causing trouble with the locals. So when the locals give them a slap, they told the police. Police would come down. Then some of them would have to leave the bay and go. They can't come down there and, and do a thing like that, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I had some good times. I've had some bad times. Well, my ups and downs. But at the moment, I had three operations in the last 18 months. Uh, my, my left... Testicle, it was aching, 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 aching. I thought, oh man, it must be a strain. 
I'll put eight on it. Nothing gives you the fuck all wrong with you. No, they sent the parts of took a bit of eating, sent sent the bit of sent the laboratories and all that. Yeah. And uh, I come back, no, you're all right. Then I had uh, the other one was by you up from your bulk and you take a cross for the year. Yeah, which you have a hernia. Yeah, hernia. I still got a massive hernia here yeah, that goes across there. Yeah, yeah. I had the hernia, took took that out, pushed it down, did it all up. That's two operations. Six months after, they did an operation here and now, what do they call it? I call it a little dick. Because the little red thing that comes out, that was a little shit in the bag, <laughs> and goes back in. And I, I changed it twice a day. I call it a little dick. <laughs> Little dick, little red dick, am I, missus? <laughs> a little red dick. Um, and that's it. I've lost a bit of weight. Um, along my ways, I've met some nice, good people. On my ways, I've seen some bad people. But no man better not come and give me any, any trouble. Because I don't want trouble. Everybody knows I'm going to have the trouble. And I know I'm going to go to jail for it. I'll have to leave the country because I will do him such damage. I won't kill him. He'll be a cripple for the rest of his life. Yeah. You kill him, I get life sentence. Cripple him, I get three years, four years, four years to do two. Come back out. You know, the, and don't fuck my friend. And don't fuck my family. Yeah. The dead again now is don't fuck with my friends. Well, you can fuck with half of my family. Because <laughs> half of them don't talk to, you know? Because I've treated them right and they never treated me right. So I thought, yeah, carry on, carry on. One of them got cheeky, Leon. He got me nuts now, he is, I think. Thought he's a big man. It was jealousy. I couldn't believe how many people that I looked after down the docks and lent them money and done this and done that. They've said bad things about me. I could I said, no, nah, he wouldn't say that. He wouldn't say that. He wouldn't say that. I said, they are cast. I said, well, that's jealousy. <laughs> he said, anyway, he said, I ain't scared of you. I said, I ain't scared of you either. He threw a punch on him, a slap, he fell down. He's lucky I didn't kick him. Because in them days, we never used to kick you. If you go down, we never used to kick you. Yeah, yeah. That's what my dad said, yeah, yeah. We never used to do that. Get back up again, I'll stay down. Yeah, yeah. Get back and fight again. Uh, he was allowed to headbutt as well. Head butt and your fist. No kicking yeah. and no biting. I've seen them boys down the doctor all over the place. Landish and rummy. When they're fighting, kicking, butting, doing the fucking lot, you know, biting. Well, you, you, you don't do that. Yeah. Especially to people you live with. Well, I mean, live with, I mean, in the gang. Live alongside. Live along, alongside you. And <laughs> you buy my pint and all this. Well, you can't buy my pint when you're a kid. But they had a little, rain, a little lane around the corner. And, uh, Used to make a circle, and they all used to fight in there. Then, if you have no fight in the schoolyard, after school, round the round the lane, and they'd all go round the lane. Yeah, yeah. And the ones I saw was a bit tasty, wasn't? Yeah. And the guys was like me, cool, and don't mind anything and all that, and don't was the the bad boys, like you know, they stay there. I wouldn't. I mean, bad boys. I mean, bad boys fighting, but you never think they was. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. There's one I don't even like now. His name is Chikamo Bakwe. He does karate, black belt. He travels the world doing, like, training them and the judge judging them and all that. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> There's a funeral down the docks. <laughs> and, uh, waiting to go in the church. I said, all right, Chick. He said, yeah. I said, oh, that was a family. You know that now with the family, Casanova? He said, I'll fucking give you that. I mean... You can't do that to me, because you're a karate fella. Chico, you and your brother black belts. I said, you raise your hand to me again, and I'll chop it off. Yeah, I'll fuck you up again. After the cemetery, after the cemetery and all that, we're going to have a fight. If that's what you want. And if you do me, I ain't coming back tomorrow. And you do me again, but you won't, because you'll be fucked in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. And he said, oh, I know your uncle's house is stunk. I went, stunk. I said, when people used to go in your house and see your pigeons, you have to wipe your feet coming out. I said, there was shit here and shit there. I said, your kitchen, I wouldn't 
Well, your front room, I wouldn't keep a dog in there. I swear to God, if I dropped down dead, no. It was absolutely disgusting. Yet, he's spotless now. He's spot, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. His kids are good. He's chucked out, oh, you've got to chuck out your own kids. That they're 14, 15, being by 8 o'clock. I never used to go in until fucking the pub shut, and I was only fucking 12, 13, you know what I mean? And he treated his kids terrible. Yeah, because he's doing karate and all that. He thinks you go around and, and threatening people. You threaten me, and you're in trouble. So, just before we go, Cass, if you had to give the, a, a message to the world after the life you've led, whatever, if you had one message to give everyone on the planet, what would it be? Love and peace and goodwill to all men. Stop the wars. Love each other. Otherwise, you'll cause disaster. Like, people think they're big and bad. They can fight, they can handle themselves. But they don't end there. they got to use a knife or a gun. <laughs> I would say, look after your close friends and family. Don't fear no man on this earth, because they could do what any other man can do. But do it first. If you know they are coming for you, you get them first. Because if you don't, you'll get hurt. Yeah. Uh, my mother fought for this country. My father went to sea. My mother's brother was in the army. He was in, they put him in a concentration camp. My Uncle Joey. There's good people and there's bad people. Um... Uh, even a couple of months ago, somebody tried to set me up because I fucked his wife. Before he was his wife, I fucked her before he was with her. Yeah. You was with her. I said, yeah, that was my ex-girlfriend. So what? Well, I'm with her now. I said, well, that's cool. No problems. But he tried to bully you. He put his finger on me like that. I bit his finger off. <laughs> I bit his finger off, yeah. Did you? Yeah, he poked, he poked me like that. I went, <clears throat> <"Ab> that. <laughs> uh, but they call, used to call me... Uh, the bulldog, calling me a fucking bulldog, I bit his finger. He shouldn't have, shouldn't have poked me in the face. And he wouldn't have had that. But I don't take no shit from nobody. And especially like, for instance, you. Oh, you're old man. Oh, your missus. And you're my friends. And we see each other once a week, have a laugh, have a meal or do this. If they harm you, they harm me too. That's the way I brought up with my mother. You help them, they help you. Yeah. Family or no family. And I've always done that. A lot of people love me and a lot of people don't like me. But when it comes to it, it's all down to jealousy. How could they be jealous of me? I ain't no rich man. I am really because of my family in America. But I don't get no money off them and they're billionaires. Yeah. I know Kelvin, he's dead now, died last year, my cousin. His missus, Madeline, she... Uh, She's a lawyer for divorces and things like that. Well, she's going out behind her back, so they say. That she wrote letters and phoned them in America that uh, we should have some of the money, the family that's over here. And I said, remember, I don't want none. She said, I don't want none either, son. We have never begged for nothing. And nobody in this world have ever given me anything but my mother and my nana. But I was my nana's favourite because I was a cheeky bastard. My grandpa used to clip across the head like that, Teddy Bishop and or Kelvin. Oh, Jerome, oh, Grandpa hit me. Oh. If I was cheeky to me, he'd slap you across the head. I'd go, nah, fuck off. And I'd, I'd run up to the hills and I'd go missing for a day or two, like, you know. He like me, left me his club. And I, I, give, I give that, I, well, couldn't, well, I sold it, but I just feel like I gave it away, like. He had a house next door. He gave me the left me that in his will. <gasps> they didn't like that, the family. Oh, Cassie, how was this? Cassie, how was that? My nana said, yeah, but he don't run home to his family when he gets his slapped ass. Oh, that's the case, is it? That's the case. And over the years, the last 40 years, one or two of my family tried to knock me for certain things. And I said, why don't you ask me? I'd give it to you. John Lennon. I could only love him and like him and his music is beautiful. But a person is, to me, when he came up to see me and I shook his hand, he was an arrogant bastard. Arrogant. 
I'm John Lennon. Mick Jagger is, yeah, what's happening? Put the music on rollers. What's happening? Yeah. You know, there were two completely different people. And nobody could tell me that because I've met them and I've talked to them. And I ain't daft. Yeah. I can suss up when things are getting good and suss up going, going bad. It's because of my upbringing. Yeah. I've been with good people and bad people. Um, I usually stay in a lot. If there's a party and a gig, and I guess invited, or there's one that anybody can go to, I will go there, you know, and have a party and be cool. No man could ever say I ran away from a fight. Yeah. No man, no man could say that. Even with my, with my fucking little, my, when I had my operation, my little dick pops up and have the shit in, the, in a bag. I'll still fight. But uh, seeing that I got the bag here and I'm, 60, uh, and I'm 76, I'd have to get a weapon. And they call it the dog. I won't say what it is. I won't say what it is in case the police come looking for me. What's your weapon of choice, Cass? My choice? Yeah. In a weapon? Yeah. Well, gun, you can have a gun. <laughs> well, you don't get no blood over you. You don't have to get near them so they can grab hold of you. Yeah. You just go, boom, boom. yeah, ah, ta da, I'm gone. Yeah, yeah. Many times, people from London, Manchester, and Liverpool that was in jail with all around the country have asked me to come and do this and come and do that. They got a good gun. Well, we'll give you so, up so much money. This. I said, no, 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 no. I said, that's not my scene. Getting paid to go and shoot somebody. Because I know the job coming to me to say that. How many people have you asked? And if it runs down the line, oh, it ends up with me. I'm the one that's going to go to jail. No, yeah. thank you. No, yeah. thank you. Keep your money. Well, Cass, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been like amazing talking to you. Like, what a story. Like, I've, like I don't know, I haven't got words to say, really. It's been amazing. Well, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you asked for me to go on a pod to let people know what's really happening and what I'm going through, what other people got to go through. Not just white against black or Chinese against somebody else. Yeah. We're all human beings. Yeah. And the best thing about John is all you need is love. Boom, 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 boom. And it's true, you know what I mean, bro? Thanks for coming, guys. It's true. Thank you so much.